This presentation will demonstrate two different strategies for evaluating the sand and gravel potential of a search area based on borehole data. The first strategy will use a simple spreadsheet style data sheet in which the data is organized into rows and columns whereby the relative material percentages are assumed to be constant throughout the drilled intervals. The second strategy will use the RockWorks Borehole Manager to allow for vertical variabilities within the data. We refer to these as 2D and 3D strategies because the 2D approach will use grid models, whereas the 3D approach will use block models. 2D is quick and easy, while 3D requires more data entry and more processing time. But 3D allows for more precise, detailed, and realistic evaluations. Both strategies are presented as RockWorks playlists because playlists implicitly document the process and they provide for one-click re-evaluations if the input data is changed or the cutoff parameters are modified. We'll start with a demonstration of how the playlists work. Let's say that we have a data sheet in which each row represents a borehole and the columns contain collar locations, overburden thicknesses, and relative percentages for the gravel, sand, silt, clay, and organic content within the entire interval below the soil horizon. We'll add our first playlist item by selecting the pie chart map program. Then we'll define the columns and colors and create a map showing the relative percentages of the different materials. Almost all of the RockWorks program menus have a button labeled playlist located in the upper right corner. If you click on this button, the menu and all of its settings will be copied into the RockWorks playlist. This playlist is accessed by clicking on the Playlist tab within the main RockWorks menu. Notice how this playlist now includes one item labeled 2D Pie Chart Map. Next, we'll select the Ternary Diagram Program. The appropriate columns are selected, a diagram is created, the playlist button is clicked, and the ternary diagram has now been added to the playlist. Finally, we'll use the XYZ to grid program to create a contour map based on the color elevations. We set up the menu and click the Continue button to test our settings and add this step to our playlist. Clicking on the Process Playlist button will regenerate all of the diagrams. The pie chart map, the ternary diagram, and the contour map. If you want to change how any of these steps work, just double click on the item within the playlist and the menu for that particular item will be displayed. Please note that these menu settings are unique to each item within the playlist. Changes made to a playlist item will not affect other instances of the same program. If we reprocess the playlist, the menu changes will alter the output accordingly. Also note that you don't have to reprocess everything in the playlist if a single item is changed. Just uncheck the boxes adjacent to any items that you don't wish to reprocess. To emphasize the main utility of the playlist, we've changed some of the original source data and reprocessed the playlist. 
we can now see that the pie chart map, the ternary diagram, and the surface contours have changed accordingly. Most importantly, these playlists may be saved so that they can be applied to other projects. Now, let's dig into the 2D strategy. The raw ingredients consist of a data sheet with borehole coordinates and relative material percentages. We'll also use an air photo as a base map for plotting a variety of maps. The end game is to use the playlist to create a map showing where the overburden is less than 15 feet thick, the sand or gravel constitutes over 70% of the drilled interval, the silt is less than 20%, the clay is less than 15%, the organics are less than 10%, and the smallest remaining contiguous areas are greater than 200 acres. The playlist starts by loading the data, setting the project dimensions, and creating multivariate maps depicting the raw data. Then, grids are created for the overburden, gravel, sand, silt, clay, and organics. This process involves the estimation of gridded points based on values of nearby control points. Next, histograms are created for all of these grid models. The gravel grid is added to the sand grid because we're equally interested in either of these commodities. The grids are then converted to Boolean true-false grids consisting of cell values that are either 1.0 for true or 0, 0.0 for false based on user-defined cutoff values. All of the Boolean grids are then multiplied together to determine where all of the parameters are true or acceptable. This final filter removes any of the remaining contiguous regions that fall below the 200-acre cutoff, leaving three acceptable quarry sites. The last two commands create a Microsoft Word file with diagrams that depict the steps that led to the final map. Now, let's pretend that after all this, we were told that the economic specifications have changed to only allow for a maximum of 5% clay. No problem. Double click on the acceptable clay item, decrease the maximum value from 20% down to 5%, click the process button, and wait two minutes. And you get this. It's not a very pretty map, but it tells us that there's nothing here that meets our specifications, thereby saving a bundle of ill-spent money. The 3D strategy expands on the 2D strategy by taking into account the vertical variability of the materials. In this example, the materials were sampled at five-foot intervals rather than using the averages for the entire hole. Obviously, this is a lot more work, but it's well worth it in the long run. As with the 2D strategy, the end game of the 3D strategy is to use the playlist to create a model in which the overburden is less than 20 feet thick. The sand or gravel is greater than 70%. The silt is less than 20%. The clay is less than 15%, the organics are less than 10%, and the volume of any contiguous ore body is greater than 1.5 million cubic yards. The 3D playlist starts by setting the project dimensions and creating grid models for the ground surface and overburden thickness. Next. Block models are created for the gravel, sand, silt, clay, and organics. 
This process involves the estimation of a 3D array of gridded points based on the values of nearby control points. The gravel model is then added to the sand model because we're equally interested in either of these commodities. The isopack grid of the overburdened thickness is then converted to a Boolean model based on an acceptable thickness cutoff of 20 feet. The solid models are then converted to Boolean true-false solids consisting of voxel values that are either 1.0 for true or 0.0 for false based on user-defined cutoff values. Next, the acceptable gravel plus sand, silt, clay, and organics Boolean models are multiplied together to show where they all agree. This model is then multiplied by the acceptable overburden model to additionally constrain the output. This model is then filtered to remove contiguous targets with volumes less than 1.5 million cubic yards. The Extract via Surface Excavation program is then used to design a rudimentary pit based on a variety of parameters such as maximum slope, bench height, and stripping ratios. Finally, the last two commands create a Microsoft Word file with diagrams that depict the steps that led to the final map. The preceding examples can be readily extended to accommodate additional data. For example, we recommend using LiDAR-based digital elevation models or DEMs rather than color elevations to produce more accurate surface models. Rockworks has capabilities for plotting surface and subsurface 3D infrastructure, such as buried utilities, which can interfere with mining activities. Rockworks also includes programs for converting volumes to mass, whereby the density conversion factors are specific to each material type. Water table data and models can be added to these strategies as another constraint to isolate areas in which pumping is minimized or eliminated altogether. Other examples include surface ownership polygons to consider royalty costs, distance to railhead computations, dry weight conversions, and so on. No matter how complex, saving a site evaluation workflow within a playlist will automate the entire procedure into a manageable process. The implicit documentation provided by the playlist is well suited for projects that are infrequently revisited as new data becomes available. Conversely, dynamic projects with continuous data updates can now be reprocessed on an as-requested basis. Sending playlists and data to Rockware for technical support is a great way to circumvent the typical try-this, try-that rigmarole. Playlists provide a means for experienced users to create workflow templates for inexperienced users so that they can simply enter data and produce reports. Playlists provide a detailed audit trail of exactly what was done, thereby eliminating the need to write down the steps and settings as a strategy is developed. Finally, Playlists provide a way to create consistent strategies that can be readily passed on to coworkers, even if that coworker is yourself. Thanks for watching.